Ladies and gentlemen, we are starting the playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access Mode New. Give a new profile a name. Cassus. Accept. Accept. New game. Allow. <laughs> Why, why are you so chill, yeah, my man? <laughs> Here we go, people. Appreciate it. I still need to change the stream title. Totally forgot to do that. It worked. A hey, nice, nice. There you go. Gross. Is this me? Don't do it, man. You don't have to do this. No, 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 no. Nice. Who are you? Who are you? I don't know. Who am I? Hold on one sec. All right, there we go. Who am I? Well, let me see. Okay, so Origin is not available in access, early access yet. Um, character name, Asus. Select background. So I'm assuming we'll go one by one. Uh, you spent all your life in service to a temple, learning sacred rituals and providing sacrifices to the god or gods you worship. Charlatan. Okay, and they also give you uh, background features. Turn this down a bit before. Deception proficiency and sleight of hand proficiency. Expert in manipulation, prone to exaggeration, and more than happy to profit from it. To any role made with deception. <laughs> Criminal. History of breaking law survived by leveraging less than legal connections. Stealth proficiency. Entertainer. Live to sway and subvert your audience, engaging common crowds in high societies alike. Robotics and performance. Folk hero, profit, money. <laughs> Champion of the common people. Challenging tyrants and monsters to protect the helpless. Animal handling proficiency and survival proficiency. Guild artisan. Noble. History and persuasion. You were raised in a family amongst the social elite, accustomed to power and privilege. Hermit. Outlander. Damn, there's a lot of them. 
Okay, and it also changes your proficiencies right here. Medicine and religion. Chose a criminal as my background. That's the hood in me. Is this basically like yes? I just checked out in the Steam store. Uh, it's basically like a. I mean, you could think of it as that in the uh, in the sense of like fantasy, but like in style of gameplay and all of that, it's more way more in depth and like it's a turn-based game when it comes to uh, to the combat. So like. You take a turn, the enemy's character may take a turn, and then back and forth. But it's free. You're not, like, stuck to, like, okay, you have to move to this block first, and then this block. But it, it's pretty cool. Like, for the base aspect of, like, RPG-ness, like, there's so many different options. Outlander. Uh, sage, curious, and well-read. Unending thirst for knowledge. Kena in history, sailor, soldier, urchin, alkalite, charlatan, criminal, entertainer. All right. <clears throat> We're going to have to pick one of these. So I'm either thinking anything that really gives me guild artisan. I mean, that's possible. Insight. What exactly? Insight allows you to read people and situations piercing through lies and other forms of deceit. And persuasion. So, religion and compass knowledge about deities of the world of Albir, Albir Toril, including their domains, clergy, and holy rites. Insight allows you to read people. Medicine is knowledge and training that can be used to heal wounds and diagnose disease. Perception is how to sense the world, how this, how your senses work together, the environment, anything out of the ordinary. Okay, and persuasion. So, I might go guild artisan. Uh, is there any members of the mer mercantile guild offering privileges and protection while engaging in your art? Because it gives you insight and persuasion. Noble is good too, but in history, seems like it's cool. Okay, so these are your starting... Wait, did it change? Okay, it went from... Which one dropped out? Oh, insight dropped out. So you get lose insight, but you gain history. Mine finally finished. Nice, nice. History is everything you know about allowing you to recognize notable names and unusual items. I don't really want to go noble, though. As much as, like, I like that, I don't like having, like, that high stature, like, above everybody else. I like being, like, the middle ground man and then rising to, like, hero and noble man. <laughs> Soldier, sleight of hand and stealth, acolyte. If I ever made like a bad guy, 100% acolyte and like full on like necromancy, whatever you can do. Uh, I think we're gonna go guild artisan, history, insight, medicine, perception, and persuasion. Then let's go to race. All right, so now you have all these. <laughs> so excited. Same, same. All right, so you have Elf. You have Trifling. Or Thiefling, not Trifling, Thiefling. Thiefling? Tiefling. Tiefling? Tiefling? I don't know how you say it. <laughs> and they all have subclasses. It's crazy. All right, this is so dope. Human. Give the warriors a national. Okay, so elves are. And it changes for each one of these. Oh my god. D and D lore experts can tell us. I'm gonna say Tifling, Tifling, Drow. The deepest layers of hell is hair the ability to wield fire and dark fire and darkness from the Arch Devil. Gifted with a particularly affinity for arcane magic. 
Dark vision, sees in the dark within 12 meters. Your blood protects you from fleeing, abyssal. What about human? Do you just get like... Okay. Comma and face the sea. Humans are known for their tenacity and endless capacity for growth. I th think I would have to go human for my like first playthrough. I don't really see myself as much as like this is pretty cool. I really like this. Because you can still do everything. It's just how you look. Halfling. <laughs> nice. So what are... These guys are... So, okay, sub-race traits, intelligence, and charisma. What are the drow? Raised by the cult in the city of... Corrupt and merciless goddess. Makes her followers with bright eyes so Undark will learn to fear Celadrine. Seldarian Drow. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna go human. First playthrough. Keep it basic. Go human and uh, kind of figure it out from there. Explore the world. All that good stuff. Alright, so where is the... Okay, so there's head. Boom. Let's get up real close in there. Think that number three? No, number two. I don't know, four. Yeah, four. Let's do green eyes. Hells. Something. A tidy slot, but. The stones are less warm here. Hells. Something just woke up down here. A tidy slot, but no room. The stones less worn here. Hells. Something just woke up. A tidy slot, but no room. The stones less worn here. Recently uncovered. You can do that one. All right, let me close this out so that way we're not constantly moving over to that. Okay. Whoa, there's even more. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy crap, dude. Decay. Jeez. Kind of cool. All eye colors. Indeed, even more. Whoa. They really wanted to give you the option for anything, dude. Demonic black. That's pretty sick. Might actually do red eyes. Ah, no, I'll keep it green. Hairstyle. <laughs> Where's the fade? Do you have a fade? Please tell me you have a fade. We're in 22. This one's a... Uh, uh, Oh boy. Wait, let's check facial hair. Okay, yeah, let's throw some facial hair on first. I think I might go with that. This guy. Yeah. I don't know which one's darker. Black Raven? Okay, yeah, black neutral. Um, okay. Back to the hair. Like a Viking. I 
13 might be the go-to. Let's see again, though. Actually, you know what? That's that's too clean. Perfect. Perfect. Actually, this one's not bad. It's a man bun. I don't know if I... I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> that's not too bad, either. It's like sleek one's not bad either but it's a little too much too too medieval for me i like it short and clean what was this one oh that was that I think 13's the go-to, yeah. Cause you got a little bit of the side part there. Not too bad. Um, this one's not too bad either, but it's like a basic, as basic as a haircut can get. This one's a little bit too much. Kinda feel like my guy would look like the guy from uh, Watch Dogs 2 from Bloom. All right, let's see, tattoo style. How do we, oh boy. Oh wait, this is face, face tattoo. <laughs> yeah, I wanna get the, I'm looking to get the Mike Tyson. I could do a neck tattoo. I'd be down to do a neck tattoo. A little much. If they had this, but just down here, I'd do it. Mike Tyson look. I love how you can do the text under your eye. Some birds. Getting my character creation done right now. Nice. That on his neck. It's like a dagger or something. It's like, I guess scorpion. I might do this one. The neck tattoo. Ah, no makeup. No, we don't need that. Glass. Yeah, what's going on, Pecky? How you doing? Alright, where it kind of starts to matter. So we got Cleric, Fighter, Ranger, Rogue, Warlock, and Wizard. Yo, Wizard Harry. Probably going to go Warlock, but Clerics represent the gods they worship, wielding potential of divine magic for good or ill. Fighters have mastered the art of combat, wielding weapons with unmatched skill and wearing armor like the second skin. Rangers are unrivaled scouts and trackers, honing a deep connection with nature in order to hunt down their favorite prey. Rogue with stealth skill and uncanny reflexes, a rogue's versatility lets them get the upper hand. So I've never actually played a top-down RPG, not sure where to start. I'm into stories and a lot of options, and I like to play as a bad guy. People have suggested... The mini original Sin 2 and Pillars of Eternity. I'm so lost. Can someone help me? So, my first thing, uh, do you have, if you have, here's my, my biggest suggestion. If you have Xbox Game Pass, play or try out Wasteland 3. It's different, but, and it's not like fantasy or anything like that, but it kind of, that was my technically like first classic RPG style game. You get the dialogue choices, you get like all that kind of stuff. If you like the game and you want to go something more fantasy, pick up uh, Divinity Original Sin 2. That is something that I just started playing like I would say like three or four weeks ago. And I've never been one for like top down or turn based combat or anything. But the, the way that they do 
the character selections, creations, uh, parties, everything, the RPG, the choices, the storylines, all of that combined completely makes it worth it. And eventually, I mean, I feel like I kind of uh, started liking uh, the way that it does play because it's not like you're linked or you're stuck to one space. Is Wasteland like Fallout? Yes. It, in a way of the world has been um, has been destroyed. In that way, yes, it is. It is more like gun focused and that kind of stuff. But if you have Game Pass, you get it anyways. So that's why I'm suggesting it. If you don't have Game Pass, then I would suggest like if you want to spend like 20 bucks, you can usually find a sale for Divinity for 20 bucks or so like 20 to 25 spend it see if you like it if you don't refund it and then kind of just move on from there but if you have pc you can get uh it's also on it pc game pass xbox's game pass for pc i mean um that's where i played it that's where i played wasteland 3 at least so um I feel like that that was like a good start for like a a top down. Now that's more of like a traditional um like turn based in a way, but uh yeah. That's the only reason I I recommend it. If you don't have Xbox P Game Pass for PC, then honestly just a hey, my suggestion would be look at uh divinity original to send to it's made by the same creators as this game so if you download that play it like it enjoy it then you'll like this the other thing is this game is in early access so it's not fully complete divinity original sin 2 is complete so you can play through that all the way through and that probably depending on how much time you spend in that might even take you up until the point where this game gets the full release depending on how long you actually play. Um, I actually didn't even finish my playthrough of uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, but I wanted to try this out and uh, we got some encouragement to play it as well. So that's why I'm here trying this out. So that, th that would be my suggestion. Um, Warlock is bound by the pact to an all world patron or trade their loyalty for supernatural abilities and unique magic and wizards master the arcane by specializing in individual schools of magic okay so then you have subclasses of warlocks the fiend work towards corrupting destructive ends and intentionally or otherwise receive hellish hellish blessings in return the great old one so you have one of two uh Bound to Eldritch beings in the far realms, work towards indestructible goals, gaining strange powers over entropy, entropy and the mind. So you get those two, and spells you get are it takes three damage, three d six physic, and becomes frightened. Play a creature. Uh, creature with fists of laughter leaving it prone and ink and in that covers you gain five hit points and deal five cold arms of hater okay i think i'm gonna go um the great old one warlock spell slots wisdom saving throw proficiency Arcana insight. So wait, does this change your ah it does? Arcana insight, intimidation, and persuasion. Because originally you start as a cleric, that's why it gave me religion, insight, medicine, and persuasion. But if you switch to this, then you get Arcana, Insight, Intimidation, and Persuasion, which are all charisma and intelligence skills. Then if we go to skills here, aha. So here is the ones where you can actually select it yourself. 
Receive a bonus for every skill that you are proficient in. This bonus increases as you gain levels in your class and applies to the checks. Uh, so for me, intimidation is the use of threats and speech for forcing others to break under your will. Arcana, knowledge of magic and applicants used for interacting with enchanted spells. Skills without proficiency. I see. Investigation. I might take away intimidation, but I'm not sure. Also, I'm not sure what the 1d20 is. Investigation. Art of destruction. Uh, whether objects or people. Nature. Religion. History. Unusable items. Unusual items. And deception. Lying to mislead others. Let's take intimidation and let's do deception. Uh, yeah. My game crashed while making my character. Oh no. Let me customize this real quick. Ah, so that's how this works. So cantrips can, can be cast at will with no preparation or spell slot needed so right now we have <clears throat> conjure a beam of crackling energy that deals force <clears throat> range 18 meters and this one gain resistance to bludgeoning piercing and slashing items from a weapons attack i might replace that inflicts chill touch Enchant a non-hostile creature to gain advantage on charisma checks against it. Mage hand, create a, spe a spectral hand that can manipulate and interact with objects. Concentration required, create an illusion. Remain hidden while ca casting the spell. Divine characters to give you advantage on attack rolls. The, what is like concentration required? Friends. Inflict friends. Enchant a non-hostile creature to gain advantage on charisma checks against it. <clears throat> concentration required. Do we have concentration? <clears throat> Sorry. Like bother. Uh, I don't really see it. Concentration required. Attack slash save. I'll leave that one. That deals force. And then if we go, oh shoot. It changed me to the fiend. I don't want to be the fiend. I want to be this guy. Undead creatures will all get a disadvantage on attack rolls. You need to interact objects. Compelling them to investigate. Whisper a melody to a creature. It takes psychic. It takes three D6 psychic and becomes frightened. And hideous laughter, laughter leaving it prone and incapacitated. Protect a, pre a creature against alteration. Okay, so that's like a that witch bolt. Curse a creature to deal an additional necrotic. Whenever you hit it with an attack, the creature will also has a disadvantage on ability checks for one ability of your choosing. Ellis rebuke. Licks. Expeditious retreat, turn dash into a bonus action, allowing you to. I honestly don't even know what I'm reading sometimes. Click to charm, charm a humanoid that you can see. Hmm. I might swap this out for this one. 
Enchantment and enchantment. Done. That was that. Then now we go to abilities. So strength minus one. Strength influences your chance to land a hit attack roll and your damage with strength based weapons and affects the distance you can jump and the weight you can carry. Okay, so these are the suggested ones that they give you. Minus one, plus one, plus two, plus two, plus zero, and plus three. Prisma is their spell casting ability. The likelihood spells will land. Okay, and it shows charisma as my if I bump this down. Use recommended. Wisdom. Druids, rangers, and clerics use wisdom as their spell casting ability. The likelihood of spells will land. Intelligence wizards use as a spell casting the likelihood spells will land. Constitution, hit points, strength. I'd rather take dexterity. Let's take one from constitution and put it to strength. I'd rather leave that at 10 and leave the rest. Wait, what happened? Oh, wait, did I still have one? Use recommended. Oh, I had two available. Oh, so I can bump up one other thing. Like intelligence. Why does it show the arrow? Ah. Uh, I see now. <laughs> Arcana. Insight. Persuasion. Okay. So by upping these, upping this by one puts everything else by up by one. I see, I see. Okay, yeah. Let's leave it at that then. That works for me. Cool, cool. Venture forth. Oh my god. Now we have to make another one? Who do you dream? Who attracts you? <laughs> Interesting. Human. Dwarf. Elf. Dwarf. Half elf. Halfling. This I could do. <laughs> does it matter or does it just like Hells. The stone. Hells. something just woke up down here a tidy slot but no room Hell, a tidy slot but no room the stones left. Hells. Something just woke up down here. leave that what kind of horns do we have here one two three four five six seven eight this is a lot of them I'm okay with 13.
Oh, I see. Yeah, that's good. Now hairstyle. <laughs> they really give you all the options here. I'm gonna come back. Uh, came back to PC. Honestly, still in the character creation. All right. Appreciate it, Squid. Thanks for uh, hanging out, man. Enjoy. I think I'm gonna go with that hair that I just had selected a second ago. It's interesting. They make you select a second character. Tattoo style. do that venture forth <laughs> <laughs> 